Good morning, race fans, and thank you for joining us today at Transport Diecast Racing. I'm JT, and I'll be your host. I'd like to welcome you all to Round 1, Group 5 of Miata's at the Crest, our first mail-in tournament featuring the iconic Japanese Roadster. We started with 48 contestants from all around the globe. All 48 drivers were qualified, seated, and divided into six groups. Matches are best of three. In the event of a third race, the car with the faster finish takes the inside lane. DNFs will only be restarted for races one and two. After four rounds, we're now down to 32 drivers. Out of 16 matchups, we've had five upsets with two coming from last week. This tournament and the prize for the winner is sponsored by Slanman Customs. The winner of this tournament will receive a $30 credit to the Slanman Customs store along with a pair of axle alignment jigs. A link to his store is provided in the video description. Now it's time to introduce the eight drivers for the day. Our first driver in Group 5 is Frank Klein of Red Pill Racing. He qualified fifth with a time of 15.981 seconds. He will be facing John Receiver of Jack, John, and Katie Racing. John didn't do too well in qualifying, landing at 44 with an 18.715 time. In the next matchup, we have Sandy Mack of Tai One On. She qualified at 20 with a 16.586 time, and she's going to be driving against Benny Wilson of Slanman Customs. Benny landed at 29 with a 16.801 second run. I expect this matchup to go three races. Then we have Big Romy of Rivera Racing. Big Romy qualified at 28 with a 16.038 time. He's got a great chance against Josh Poffler of Rust Belt Diecast Racing. Josh had some control issues, qualifying at 41 with a 17.642 time. He'll have to stay straight to stand a chance. And then we have Rowdy Rally of Rowley Brothers Racing. Rowdy Rowley qualified at 17 with a 16.488 time. He has a good matchup against Willie Makeit of MNG Racing. Willie landed at 32 with a 16.972 time, but he's produced times in the low 16s before. Alright ladies and gentlemen, let's get to racing. First up we have Frank Klein and John Receiver. Frank starts on the inside as the higher seed. We actually found out that John was riding on a bad axle during qualifying, and that's been fixed since, so expect him to do a little better this time. As Frank starts off with a good lead, adds to it on the back straight. John's still within striking range though. A good take on the sizzler from Frank. And he gets turned around. John's nowhere to be seen. Frank takes race one with a 16.558 time. There goes John. No idea how he got held up there. Let's go check the replay. He loses a lot of speed from that drop, but I don't see what held him up. Switch sides, John's on the inside and he needs a win here, but I'm not sure if he has it in him. Will Frank beat him to the open track? No, John keeps the lead and the inside lane advantage. That was not a good start from Frank, but he's keeping it close. He's waiting for a mistake from John. Going for the pass, but no, John blocks him and he takes the win with a time of 16.454, which is faster than Frank's last run. That means John takes the inside lane for the next race. There goes that pass attempt and block from John as he slides down to close off the inside lane. Um. It looks like John opted to start from the outside lane instead. I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe they didn't realize that John had the faster time. But this is not good. John really needed that inside lane advantage. Frank's got that same big lead as he did in the first race. Much bigger this time. Ooh, ugly turn. Oh, John with the late pass. Wow. Oh my god, that, what? I'm at a loss for words. That was amazing. John kept it together, waited for a mistake from Frank, which was a big one, as he goes all the way up the turn. And we have another upset as John Receiver takes two wins and advances to round two. Next up, Sandy Mack of Taiwan On versus Benny Wilson of Slanman Customs. Sandy Mack starts on the inside lane. She had the faster time in qualifying. Benny keeping it tight, but Sandy's the first one to the open track. She kicks out her back end a bit there. Benny's right on her and he gives her a little love tap, waiting for her to make a mistake. She hits the wall and slides out, but so does Benny, and they finish in the same distance that they started in. Sandy takes the first win with a 16.800 time. 
Here's the replay, and that's where she slides out, but here we see Benny also making an error of his own. Hitting more walls than she did, actually. These two are pretty dead even. Switch sides, Benny's on the inside this time. Sandy's time was 0 .001 seconds faster than his qualifying time. I'm pretty sure these two are dead even if we were to drag race them. Maybe a little bit faster with Benny as he's staying a little further ahead than she was on the last race. Oh, bad mistake by Sandy. Looks like Benny's got this in the bag. Ooh. Oh, they both finish going backwards. 16.817, which means Sandy will take the inside lane for race three. There goes that bad turn by Sandy. That took away all of her speed, and it was smooth sailing for Benny from there. Now for race three, Sandy returns to the inside lane with her slightly faster lap time. Benny's gonna need a little luck here. As Sandy keeps the inside lane advantage, Benny is really tight on her though. He taps her bumper a few times, but ends up giving her a big lead. Looks like, oh no. Oh, and Ben, oh my, wow. Benny goes outside for the pass, and then he ends up spinning around. Sandy almost takes it back, but Benny has just enough speed to steal that win. And here we see Benny go high and then wide. And then they make a lot of contact, hitting everything on the way home as Benny steals the win. And Benny advances to round two. We'll be right back. If you're looking to upgrade your track, look no further than Slamman Customs. Slamman Customs makes high quality 3D printed track parts and accessories, including start gates, 45 degree turns, 90 degree turns, 180 degree turns, and the new banked Crash Racer 45 degree turn as well as many other parts and accessories to upgrade your track. Visit Slam Man Customs on Facebook and use the promo code for 10% off your next order. And we're back with the third matchup. Big Romy of Rivera Racing versus Josh Poffler of Rust Belt Diecast Racing. Big Romy takes the inside lane to start as the higher seed, and he's off to a big lead. Building onto that lead, Josh is no longer in the picture. I am not sure if he is even still moving forward or if he just fell off somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. Big Romy takes that first win with a 17.284 time, and there goes Josh partially under the track. Let's see if we can find out how he got so far behind. All right, he's still there. We are gonna need a camera facing the other way because that's two times now where we have no idea what happened. Switch sides, Josh is on the inside lane this time. Good luck, my friend. You're gonna need a lot of it because you just lost the inside lane advantage. Big Romy starting to put it on him, but Josh is keeping it tight, surprisingly. Oh, Big Romy makes a mistake, can Josh pass? No. Romy with the block, he sends Josh spinning and he takes the win with the 17.509 time and there goes Josh finishing the lap. There we see that mistake from Big Romy and then the pass attempt by Josh. Romy barely turns his car over to the side just enough so that he blocks Josh's way. By the way guys, check out Rust Belt Diecast Racing on YouTube when you're done here please. And Big Romy advances to round two with his two wins. Next up, we have Rowdy Rowley versus Will He Make It. Will He Make It. Will He Make It. Will He Make It? I don't know, but Rowdy Rowley's on the inside lane with that advantage. Both a little squirrely in that turn. Rowdy is starting to put a little more distance between them, but Willie is still in striking range. Oh! Rowdy spins around and gives him a chance, but Willie just helps correct his car and gives Rowdy that win with a 17.371 time. And there goes Willie on the wall. Okay, that's a long time to be looking at Willie, guys. Rowdy Rowley went really wide on that turn, hits the wall, hits that inside wall, but Willie just can't find his way around him as he helps Rowdy take the win. Switch sides, Willie takes the inside lane this time and he really needs a win here to stay alive but will he make it? 
And he gets a good start as he keeps that inside lane advantage. Ooh, Rowdy almost taking it from him as they trade paint. Willie starts to add some distance on the drop. Ooh, but he spins out. Can Rowdy take? No, Rowdy messed up somewhere too. Missed his opportunity and he now helps Willie win this race for himself. So now they've both just helped each other finish when they both might have DNF'd without the other. You do not get points for assists, guys. It's win or lose. And there goes that love tap from Rowdy Rowley that gives Willie Make It just enough speed to round the corner and make it home. Switch sides. Rowdy Rowley is on the inside again. He had the faster time. Good luck to both. And Rowdy keeps that inside lane advantage. Willie's staying right on him, though. This is the tightest race so far all day. And no, Willie. He was right there, hanging on tight, waiting for a mistake from Rowley. But he makes his own mistake, and he hands Rowdy the win. This point here, this was the start of some beautiful driving. The, the best driving that I've seen on this track, honestly. These guys were basically hitched to each other with some beautiful tandem driving up until Willie spun out. And here comes Rowdy Rowley pinballing the whole final straight. And Rowdy Rowley with his two wins will advance to round two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for group five. In round two, it'll be John Receiver versus Benny Wilson and Big Romy versus Rowdy Rowley. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And here's your tournament bracket.